Hi everybody, welcome back. It's Aisha again and welcome to Digital ELA Live. Uh, before we get into the lesson, I just want to say thank you guys for watching the video. We're working pretty hard to produce them and it is really great that you guys are just taking the time out of your day to watch them. I think this extra practice will really help. Okay, so today, just like last week, there are going to be two videos. This video is going to be me reading a nonfiction passage called Champion of the Channel. Watch the video, take notes, and then try the link in the description where you'll find a worksheet based on this passage. Um, once you do the worksheet, watch the next video, which Alexa's going to do, and she's going to go over the answer. This is just like last week, but in case you missed it. Okay, so we're just going to get into it, and at any time, if you feel like you need to copy something down, pause the video. So today we're going to be going over an inference. In, an inference is an assumption based on text evidence. So an example of that would be if reading those three sentences down there, Alexa listens to Italian music. Alexa wears an HSAS sweatshirt. Alexa has under eye circles. Choose one of those sentences and make an inference about Alexa based on the evidence. Um, for example, if you chose the middle sentence, Alexa wears an HSAS sweatshirt, you could infer that she's an HSAS student. It might not be completely accurate, and inferences are kind of guesses. They're never perfect, but they're based on evidence. So inference questions will ask you to infer something about the text. In order to do this, you need to find evidence in the text that relates to what the question is asking and then make an inference based on it. You have to be careful that your answer doesn't draw conclusions that aren't supported by the text. For example, if we go back to those three sentences, say the first one, Alexa listens to Italian music, an inference could be that she likes Italian music or that it makes her happy, but going too far would say, be saying she must be fluent in Italian. Inferences do have to be connected to the evidence. So what we're gonna be doing today is reading each paragraph. We're gonna quickly go over a main idea. Um, if you guys remember annotating from last week, it's a good idea to try to annotate this by yourself get some practice in, but um, today we're focused on inferences. And then after each paragraph, we're going to make an inference just to get some practice in based on that paragraph. Uh, before we start, let's see what inferences we can make based on the title of the passage, which is called champion of the channel. So a channel means a body of water. If someone's the champion of something, they're usually the best. For example, some people would say the champion of basketball is Michael Jordan. So we can assume today that we're talking about someone being the best in water. In this case, it's swimming, but there are other water sports, I guess. Okay, so we're going to go on to paragraph one. In 1926, an editor at the London Daily News predicted that Gertrude Ederly, an American swimmer with 18 world records and three Olympic medals, would fail in her attempt to swim across the English Channel. He claimed that even the most uncompromising champion of the rights and capacities of women must admit that in contests of physical skill, speed, and endurance, they must forever remain the weaker sex. Yet, at only 19 years old, Ederly not only became the first woman to accomplish this feat, she also broke the men's record by two hours. Gertrude Ederly's triumphant swim across the English Channel was a testimony to her determination, innovative spirit, and passion for swimming. Okay, so now we're gonna go over the main idea from this paragraph. So I put, and you can come up with your own if you want, I put, Gertrude Ederly surprised people when she was able to swim across the English Channel in 1926. Now we're gonna make some inferences. We're gonna focus the inferences for this paragraph on the, if, on the obstacles that Gertrude Ederly is facing. So I, I'm first underlining some evidence to make some inferences. The first piece I chose was, this bit that the editor said that in contests of physical skill, the reason that I underlined that because an inference I'm making is that this is a physically challenging thing. So one obstacle that Gertrude Ederly has to face is how hard the swim is. So that's an inference because it's not directly stated in the text, but it's supported by evidence. Another inference that I'm going to make about an obstacle that she's facing is, um, is the social obstacle that she's facing. So I underlined that little bit there. They must forever remain the weaker sex. The reason that I'm inferring that she's facing social obstacles is because it seems like an editor and an editor is usually speaking for a lot of other people, usually their opinion matters. An editor is saying that her gender is going to be one of the things that holds her back. So the obstacles that I infer Gertrude Ederly is facing is how hard the swim is and the social obstacle that people don't expect that women will be able to complete it or a woman would be able to complete it. 
For the next paragraphs, I'm going to go over the inferences that we're making in a little bit less detail, but that is generally how we make inferences based on a text. Okay, we're going to move on to the next two paragraphs. Crossing the English Channel is a daunting task for any swimmer. At its narrowest point, the channel measures 21 miles across. Its icy waters hover around 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and its unruly tides and currents toss swimmers around like bobbing corks. Stinging jellyfish, seaweed, and floating debris from shipwreck and lost cargo present added hazards. For decades, the channel's perils have defeated countless swimmers. Ederly, too, failed in her first attempt to cross the channel in 1925. Just six miles short of finishing, she became ill, and her coach had to haul her out of the water. Undeterred, Ederly decided to try again. Ederly knew that if she did not complete the challenge this time, she might never get the opportunity to set this record, because a rival female swimmer was preparing to make her second attempt at the crossing as well. Okay, so really quickly, my main idea for these two paragraphs is crossing the English River would be extremely difficult, but Gertrude Ederly was determined to set the first female record. So for the third paragraph, um, based on the second, well, for the second paragraph, with the first on this slide, um, based on that first sentence right there, crossing the English Channel is a daunting task for any swimmer. We can infer that crossing the channel, that Gertrude, what Gertrude Ederly did, was a huge milestone for women. Because as it said in the last paragraph, she was doubted. There was a lot of social obstacles for her. And in this paragraph, it explains how hard and like physically challenging it actually was. So that's my inference. For the third paragraph, for the second one on this slide, um, I'm making an inference about Ederly's personality. It says in this paragraph that she tried again, even though we know it's already hard and even though she failed the first time. Based on that, like willingness to try again, we can infer that Gertrude Ederly is really determined, that she's really a hardworking, determined person. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next paragraph. Yeah, I underlined that a little bit. That's the evidence I focused on. Ederly decided to try again because that is what we make our inference based on. To prepare for the marathon swim, Ederly found ways to improve her equipment. She and her sister Meg discovered that the melted candle wax perfectly sealed the goggles edges, effectively waterproofing Ederly's goggles against hammering wave. The sisters also designed a, a two-piece swimsuit for Ederly. During her first channel crossing attempt, she had worn a standard one-piece swimsuit that, after lengthy hours of swimming across the channel, had stretched out, filling with water and creating drag, making an already challenging task almost insurmountable. Unlike the cumbersome typical bathing suit, the silk invention weighed little and allowed for easy movement. Okay, so the main idea I put for this paragraph is, Ederly and her sister tested and designed the equipment that made her swim possible. The um, inference that I'm making is based on the fact that we learn in this paragraph that her sister Meg helps her design everything. We can infer because of that, that Ederly had support from her sister and probably from her family. Okay, next two paragraphs. On August 6, 1926, Ederly waded into the channel at near Cape Grisnes, France. At first, she shivered in the bold, chilling water, even though she had covered her body in eight layers of grease for insulation. Her limbs felt stiff, her strokes were irregular. Driving forward, she fought to clear her mind and find what she called her sphere a place where the sea became her only companion and the shrieks of the gulls and the humming of the boat engines faded away. Using a new overhand stroke called the American Call, Ederly settled into a, set, a steady pace, briskly breaking through the waves. Throughout Ederly's swim, two tugboats accompanied her. One carried newspaper reporters who wired dispatches of her progress to shore. The other displaying a sign that read, this way, old kid, with an arrow pointing forward, transported her coach, family, and friends. Her coach played songs such as, Yes, We Have No Bananas, on a phonograph, so that Ederly could time her strokes to the rhythm. Using a net, her coach also passed her baby bottles of broth for nourishment. Okay, so really quickly, the main idea I said for these two is, as Ederly crossed the channel, she had to focus on swimming, and she had the support of her coach and her family alongside her. In paragraph five, the first one on this slide, um, we learn a lot about Ederly getting into her mental sphere, despite the challenges, like the cold and the noise around her. 
Because she was able to get into her sphere despite all of that, we can infer that she um, had great mental focus and that she was really determined to make this trip. For the second paragraph on this page, we learn about her family and her coach and how they supported her as she swam. Because of how supportive they are in the inference we made in paragraph one about the social challenges that Ederly is facing, we can infer that her family and her coach also wanted her to succeed and also wanted her to defeat the bigger social issue and prove that women could. Okay, now we're going on to the last paragraph. For hours, Ederly swam, dodging debris with an amused smile. However, as she neared the English shore, a sudden fierce storm erupted. The tides and waves forced Ederly backwards, and she fought the stubborn swells for several hours. The salty water caused her tongue to swell and inflamed her ears. Yet, Ederly felt indescribably happy as she churned through the sea. Finally, as she neared the English shore, the storm abated and the tide turned. No longer fighting against her, the sea pushed her towards the shore and victory. Okay, so the main idea I said for this paragraph, for the final one, is Ederly dealt with challenges up until the last stretch, but it was all worth it because she succeeded. Now, the inference I'm making based on this paragraph is based on the fact that she, the obstacles that she faced, her swollen tongue and inflamed ears, don't seem to take away from the fact that she felt indescribably happy at the end. I'm going to infer that it was all worth it because she feels happy at the end. And I'm also going to infer that Ederly felt really proud because, and determined to do it all. Even though I said that before, this backs up the inference I made because she was happy all the way through. Now, the main idea for this entire passage, and it's okay, if you wanna pause now and come up with your own, go ahead, but it is important to either do that or copy this one down. The one I said was, Despite facing many challenges on her way, Gertrude Ederly worked hard and proved all her critics wrong by becoming the first female record by becoming the first female record of crossing the English River. Okay, so now that you guys are done, good job. Today you learned how to make inferences and what they are, and I want you guys to try the worksheet in the description. There are going to be some function questions which we went over last week and some inference questions which I told you guys about. Once you're done, watch the next video with Alexa and she's gonna go over them all. We miss you guys all a lot and thank you for watching.